today is another method of making fire. So I have with me my nephew, Garrett. He's Hi. never been on TV before, no. but he's, he's awesome, so you'll see. But today is a good example of what could potentially be a real survival hazard. So we were out bird watching early this morning. We were with a friend that was, was hunting ducks. Um, Every survival situation happens when you're not prepared. If you're totally prepared, it's usually not a survival situation. So this is a scenario that happens quite often. We just got done hunting, we lo we're lost. We don't know, we've been wandering around all day. Night is coming. For Garrett and I to spend the night out here tonight, there's a good chance that we wouldn't make it. So even after today, the whole ground is wet with frost so it gives you an indication that it's going to be a very very cold day out today so another thing that makes this a potentially dangerous situation is without a fire to stay warm for the night yeah like i said we're not gonna be able to make it and it's really difficult because it has been raining it's been snowing everything is wet with frost right now and so there's a lot of talking points that i'm going to talk about today. I'm going to find a suitable place to go make a fire and as I'm doing it again I'm looking for materials the driest stuff around. So come on let's go here. Here in this little valley everything is wet with frost. Normally in the summer all of this dried vegetation might be nice and snappy and crisp but instead it's all wet. It's not going to catch on fire. I've got to look for something that's not covered in frost. So how frost usually works is on a clear day like today, all the moisture that's in the air falls to the ground. If you ever notice on a cloudy day, if it's overcast, you can wake up in the morning and there's no frost because the clouds kept in all the moisture in the air. But even though this was a beautiful day today, there's gonna be a lot of moisture falling from the ground. So all this stuff right here is basically moisture from the air falling on the ground and freezing. So if I can get under trees, it's gonna be, not because it hasn't rained here, it's because all of the moisture that's in the air hasn't fallen because all the upper branches of the tree trees have collected all the moisture. So things up here that are up off the ground, like these kind of sticks, they're not super dry because the air is moist, but it's some of the driest stuff around. And you can hear that. Okay, that's a good indication that this, this wood is nice and dry. I'm gonna try to collect a lot of these branches. If I can find some dried pine needles, that's gonna be something that's gonna be really, really nice to find. Here's a, here's a fallen tree and it has it has some pine pine needles on there, nice and dry, not covered with frost. But you might not be in a location, it may have rained all day and even this stuff is gonna be wet. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna use what we can find and we're gonna use whatever we might have with us in our pockets to get a fire going. This is just an aside, a tangent, a really cool find. So I'm looking for materials to make a fire. And I'm looking up here on this branch and check it out. There is a dead meadow vole, a dead rodent. So yeah, whenever, okay, so whenever I am outside, I'm always tracking, right? And a lot of people think when they're tracking, you're looking at footprints. Really, you're just paying attention of all different kinds of signs that you can find. This is made by a bird of prey, a bird of prey found that vole, captured it, took it up into a branch, could have been an owl, took it up to a branch, saved it there because it had already been distracted by another vole. So a lot of times birds will save things, keep it there, and then they'll keep, you know, if if the if the prey is there, you got to you got to get it while you can. So this bird stored this rodent here for a later date. If you go down in the southwest, there's a bird that's called a shrike that a lot of times you'll see lizards, dried up lizards, snakes, they're 
put up on barbed wire and stuff or put up into cactuses where they actually dry up in the sun they preserve themselves and then that bird will always go back when when the prey is is not around or there's no food they can go back to those places where they can find food so that is pretty sweet that mouse right there is saved for a little snackings for a predatory bird uh, for later right just here. a cool find it's probably the very best find of the day here T take this Garrett this is great this is dried up branches with all kinds of pine needles I'm try to pull it off while I can great okay cool cool I'm gonna make a fire right over here Garrett you've been getting more branches and stuff along the way yeah. cool okay now if you look at our if you go and, and look at our other videos about making fire uh, you might recognize this location the gist is learning how to make fire in very different ways. So we're gonna have a series on this. Um, the scenario right here is we just got done hunting, we're lost, but Garrett came prepared. Garrett, you have your backpack right there? That's sweet, you carry this with you. You're, you have been looking at survival videos, your dad is a hunter, you have a mom that loves you, so she packs you all kinds of things just in case. Okay, so you have extra gloves. I was walking and I found a piece of birch bark. We'll talk about that later, but it's one of my very favorite ways to start a fire. I don't know everything that you have in here, but you have, looks like an old ski rope, but it's just a rope. Ropes are good, but you have it with you. This is plastic. It's gonna be very important, not for tying up things, but for starting a fire. Okay, you might have some other things in here and Maybe we'll do another episode about what you have in here as your survival pack. But I think we have the most important items. Okay. So again, the ground is really wet. It's hard to find dry materials. What I have with me this time is, this is a chunk of magnesium. You can buy this at, at outdoor stores. It's another way to start a fire. Now, I think the the uh, episode that we had before this one was a ferrocin rod. So this is a, a little piece of that ferrocin rod that you can strike it with a knife and make sparks. Like, okay, so that does that. But this has shavings of, uh, you can shave magnesium off of it. Magnesium is a metal. But if you get it hot enough, it'll react with oxygen. It burns incredibly hot, incredibly bright. If you have enough magnesium set a fire in front of your eyes, you could actually lose your vision. So it's a big, huge flash. Again, very hot. And the neat thing about it is once you get magnesium to catch on fire, you can try to put it out by dunking it in the water. It'll keep on burning. So this was this is what I brought with me. And I also carried with me a candle. Okay, so understanding that the wood that I have around here, a lot of it is wet, especially stuff that's found on the ground. I don't have a lot, I have some of this dry stuff right here. And when, when you're using magnesium, you want to try to get some bark. This is wet bark, it's not that great, but I'm going to use it to catch crumbles of magnesium. So this is my little piece of magnesium and I'm going to try to shave it off. I'm going to try to use the back of my knife because if I use the blade of my knife, I don't want to I don't want to have to uh, dull the blade if I don't have to. And you have your knife, but we'll just use this one for now. And I'm going to try to, if you can see, see how I'm shaving off chunks of magnesium. It's fairly precious stuff. So I'm having this piece of bark catch it all. So I have 
some uh, some shavings of magnesium. Now again, with all these things that you can buy from out different outdoor stores and stuff that claim to be you know survival material or whatever, it still means nothing if you don't know how to use it. And so you, I really, you have to take all these items and you have to practice and practice and practice when you're not in a survival situation. That is what's really going to save your life. Okay, so I have, I'm just gonna show you how this works real quick. So I have this magnesium set up and I might have enough here to catch it on fire. I'll use the sparks and they'll jump onto the magnesium and you'll see them catch on fire. It's getting, trying there. Okay, there you go. So you saw that flash. So that was the magnesium. You saw how fast that was a flash. So you can get flashes all day long, but if you don't have the materials ready, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna work. So I'm going to um, start over again. I'm gonna get a nice good pile of magnesium and I'm gonna get this stuff ready to go so it can take advantage of that flash. I have a pretty good pile of magnesium shavings trying to keep it consolidated so they're all together now I'll try to get this to catch on fire except this time I'm going to get this nice and ready to throw onto that it's gonna be difficult this is not going to be easy not easy at all Okay, again, this all comes with practice. Okay. okay, again, it just started. You can see I have a little coal there. That's a good sign, but it it's, might be something I'm gonna have to try again. Okay, I have I have a nice pile of magnesium, but yet again, and you have seen this in, in other videos where I've made fire, I try to have all of my ducks in a row. Yeah, I can maybe get this to flare up. Maybe I can catch pine needles on fire, but if I was to burn all this stuff, I'm gonna run out of fire and I'm gonna have to do it all over again. So I move from this and I work my way up to something that's a little bit larger to larger to larger okay I have some of this birch bark that's on hand that might be good but it's wet so it's not totally ideal and I'm gonna try to be you know a lot of people will say well you know this little thing of magnesium this candle isn't realistic it actually is if you have it with you it is realistic is it realistic that you're gonna find this in the wild well, if you have it, you better use it because it's the difference. It's a life and death situation. And also, unfortunately, in the world that we live in today, there's litter all over the place. And especially plastic, since it doesn't biodegrade. I can take this plastic that Garrett brought with him, and I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit. You remember that nylon, rubber from your shoes, rubber from inner tubes, uh, you've got um, plastic things for, like your shoelaces oftentimes are synthetic materials and all that stuff actually is quite flammable so I can take pieces of rope and I can get this to set aside and this stuff will catch on fire okay there have been places I I had a, a friend that was a mountaineer and he needed to make a fire there is no trees up at the tops of the mountains the only thing that he could use to get a fire started, he had to shave off pieces of his rubber boot and get those to catch on fire. Okay, you can take that and then you can go smaller. If you can try to try to get 
chunks off of that. See those 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 really long curly cues like that? That is really good for starting a fire. I'm gonna collect that and get a good nice bundle of that. And again, working your way up from that to maybe some big splinters like that, keeping those on the side. Another thing you can do is what's called batoning. You take your knife like this and you take a, take a stick and you just use that like a hammer and see how effective that is. You can whittle down really big pieces of wood by doing that, it's called batoning. Okay, okay now we got a fire. Then bringing in that nylon gonna catch on fire adding more pine needles to it remember that fire is heat heat rises okay keeping the hottest part of the flame is up on the top give me some more pine needles if you can find them Garrett I've got these shavings that Garrett made put those in there here we go place like this is just as kind of like advanced fire I've got a, I don't have a flame but I have a good coal coal underneath there and it's so warm that it's evaporating all the moisture so this is all smoke I'm gonna let that just kind of keep evaporating that moisture out there I'm just gonna give it a little bit this is more advanced this is the kind of things that you learn with practice but now that it's just kind of smoldering like that there's enough heat it's not going to go out, but I'm letting all this stuff evaporate out. Okay, I have my candle. I'm going to get that. Because since this wood is so wet, this might be very, very important to me. Actually, in the jungle, from people that were living in the jungles, and all the wood was always wet from all the... It's a rainforest, so it's always wet, always moist. But if you dribble a little bit of wax on there, that can act to kind of help bring a fire on. Okay, that's good. Thanks. Here's some more. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some on right on there. I'm just gonna drip that on there. So how a candle works, believe it or not, wax itself is not flammable. But how a candle works is this flame, this wick is, is on fire, right? But what's actually burning is the wax that is so hot that it's vaporizing. It's like, uh, it's like water vapor, okay? So you're taking a solid wax, putting it into, into vapor form, and then that's, that is actually moving up the wick, and then that vapor is catching on fire. You can't just put a candle in the fire and have it have it uh, catch on fire it's the wick that just kind of keeps all those uh, wax vapors in okay and keeps it on fire so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take coat put a little bit of wax on there okay in a real survival situation I would uh, keep this going but I have a good fire here I can blow it out but I'm gonna show you this this is nice this is nice but I'm gonna try to burn bring this fire over here and just show you how you the camera might or might might or might not be able to pick up how flammable a little bit of wax on top of that wet wood will be but this is again something that I just want to encourage you to practice in your own time you can put put that wax impregnated wood in there and it'll help it burn Okay, great, great, thank you. Yeah, the camera might not be able to see it, but I, I hope that you don't have to see it to believe it. It's just actually, it works. I'm gonna show you what, one reason why I like birch bark. 
This birch bark I ripped off of a tree. I always keep it with me whenever I can because it is one of my favorite fire starters. I'm just going to show you how good it does burn. It, it almost burns like it's, uh, like it's chemicals. Okay, see that? It's going to curl. As it gets warmer, it curls. But look at how that burns. It burns in a very unique way. Look at that. You're not going to find a lot of materials um, from nature that burn quite like it. it. It's really, really good. And that's, that's staying on for a long time. This is going to be good for me to heat up materials like this wet piece of wood. I can put it under here and get that to dry it out and catch it on fire. But again, I guess the, the take home on this is just how awesome birch bark is. And it's burning probably even a little bit better because I have a little bit of wax on it. But look at how important this might be now, now that my fire is, is all out. I can put that in there and get my other pieces of wood caught on fire like that. Remember heat rises. I like to build things like a little teepee. And it'll catch on fire. This this is uh, branches that I collected earlier, but they're already, they already have frost on them. I wouldn't want to put them on the fire just yet because they're wet, but at least I can put them on the side. The warmth of the fire is gonna dry out my wood. But the talking points, okay, so this is me making a fire by using this magnesium strip and this flint or um, ferrocin rod. And that's, that's mainly my primary objective with this video, but hopefully you learned a lot in the process of me making a fire. There's a lot to learn, but again, you learn this stuff by practicing, practice, practice, practice. Okay, thanks. If you like what you've just seen, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.